SEC permanent rivals, Ross Dellinger reported this could be the possible uh, permanent opponents for a nine-game SEC yep. schedule. All right, in a nine-game conference schedule, Missouri would play Oklahoma, <laughs> Arkansas, and Vanderbilt every year. I would give them a C of toughness. Mm. Mm. What do you think? I'm going to go C. I'm going to go C plus. We'll see how Oklahoma turns out. C plus, right. huh? It's uh, got to be different, huh? Yeah, I do. Arkansas would play Missouri, Texas, and Ole Miss. Ooh, I'm going. I'm going C. And it's good to get lower grades in here. You want low grades in here. I'm going C minus. And you want everybody to watch your ball games. Nobody's going to watch that when you're playing the worst teams. Mm. Well, I mean, if you're it's winning, the SEC, Dave, they're going to watch. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. What else is there to do? As many people as many people watch Arkansas and Vanderbilt as Alabama Auburn. No, no, no. But I'm saying they're still going to watch. And Arkansas is not playing Vanderbilt. Not permanent rivals. So I'll, I'll go. I'll go C plus here as well. Did you get out permanently? Did y'all see? Did y'all see uh, Arch Manning and Old Boy are going to fight it out this year for the starting yeah, right. job. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Come on, I'm Arch. Skip into all the yeah, stuff. But, yeah. Come on, Arch. And in other yeah, yeah. segments. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Texas A&M is going to play LSU, Texas, and Mississippi State. Mm. LSU, Texas, and Mississippi State. Give me, give me B minus. B minus toughness. I feel like that's uh, that's the correct grading. Uh, I'd go B minus. Texas, Oklahoma, Texas A&M, and Arkansas. Ooh, I'm going to go B. I'm going to go straight B, not plus or minus. I mean, there's some versatility there. You're everybody. They're all going to be pretty good. I mean, traditionally. So. What do you think, Dave? But apparently, uh, this right here, I mean, look, that's an A-plus schedule. I like Texas playing those games. But apparently, in an eight-game schedule, Texas wouldn't play Texas A&M every year. Yeah, that's what, there's just no huh? way they don't go to nine game, right? There's no way they don't go to nine game. That's tough. I'd, I'd give you I mean, those are the three teams I want to see Texas play every year. As much as you'd love to see them play a Florida, Georgia, Alabama, yeah. LSU. I mean, Texas needs to play Oklahoma, one, for sure. Texas A&M, and then Arkansas, Texas is a huge yeah, one, just in sense. terms of the state. It so. only makes sense. The LSU, when LSU and Texas, the beef that was they, that they had in that game. Well, you got I nice, wouldn't mind seeing that every year. There's a nice hatred circle forming when you look at LSU and Arkansas and Texas and Oklahoma, like you're, you're, you're. That's that. There's some. There's not a lot of love lost in between those four yeah. teams. I kind of like that little corridor of matchups. Love it. Oklahoma would play Texas, Missouri, and Florida. See, I, I just have to think Florida is going to be back somewhat at some point. But like it, it, I'm not talking about the next hundred years. Within the next three to five years, can you read it one more time? Texas, Missouri, and Florida. Florida. Mm. Give me, state. give me, give me B. Give me a B there because I, Texas and Florida, two of the biggest brand names in in college sports. Go C. All right, so here's LSU's. They play Ole Miss. Mm. They would play Texas A and M and Alabama. How much do we believe in A and M? That's the question. I don't until you is. prove it. I don't. So what are you going? What's your grade? I'd go. Um, I'm going C plus. I'd go B. One C plus. Mm -hmm. I go B. So Ole Miss would play Mississippi State, obviously, then LSU and Arkansas. Man, I feel like they did these about as even as they could. Uh, I'm gonna say since you're having to play LSU and Arkansas with them, give me C plus. Give me C plus. Give I got C plus. Ones. All right, that was was that Ole Miss or Mississippi mm -hmm. State? It was Ole Miss. Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Kentucky, and Texas A and M. It's interesting right here. C minus. Mississippi State may have got the best draw out of anybody. Mm. C plus. Mm. So here's Alabama's Auburn, Tennessee, and LSU. Yeah, a. <laughs> now I want to. Nick Saban came out and said he didn't like this. Yep. I know we're getting. We're, yeah. we're going to talk about that later, but I've got a theory on that. Okay. So then Auburn would play Alabama, Georgia, and Vanderbilt. You got to give us Vandy after you give us Bama and Georgia. You got to right. Either that or bye, bye week. Y'all get an automatic SEC win. It's like the spot on the bingo card. I mean, uh, look, a. But here's the thing. As an Auburn fan, I'm used to this. Now, all y'all did was just guarantee we played Vanderbilt every year. Thank you. <laughs> like, we already had to play Bama and Georgia every year. <laughs> Thank you for at least guaranteeing me get Vanderbilt. <laughs> it's an A. It's an A. I mean, but good. Line them up. I want to yeah. I I go through them to get where we We going. Auburn only it's got— It's an A with Vanderbilt on the schedule? Yeah, because you have Georgia and Bama. Yeah. <laughs> You're basically playing the two teams that are probably going to win the national championship. For sure. It's a, that's like me fighting Godzilla and King Kong, and then all of a sudden, like, a dwarf— Hawkeye. They put Hawkeye in that. there? Yeah. Like— All right, so Vandy would play Tennessee and State, then Auburn and Missouri. They're screwed anyway, so— Okay. I don't know. <laughs> all right. A++. plus plus. 
So Tennessee would play Vanderbilt, Alabama, and they have South Carolina. Man, Tennessee, they let Tennessee off the hook. They let Tennessee off the hook. If I'm a Tennessee fan, if I'm a Tennessee fan and a Mississippi State fan, I'm Shia LaBeouf in this one. Really? I'm Shia LaBeouf in this one. I mean, look, Vanderbilt, okay, you got to play that. We already know about that. We know about Bama. They kept that rivalry there. We know, But South Carolina? How is Georgia or Florida not on that list? Yeah. <sighs> you got to give them at least Florida. They play Florida all the time. Yeah, you got to give them at least Florida. Well, it seems like, it seems like what they did with Florida uh, – it came down to South Carolina. Like, like that's what it seemed like. Because they, they gave both Florida and well, Tennessee South Carolina. Like, I who do you it. believe in the next three years? South Carolina or Florida? Who do you believe in more to be better? Probably South Carolina. I mean, you right? gotta go South Carolina right now, but the I don't think it's drastic is what people think it is. By the way, their tight ends coach followed me today. Did he? Morning, yeah. Mm. Uh Kentucky would play Mississippi State, South Carolina, and Georgia. Okay. Don't hate that if I'm, I'm gonna a Kentucky B minus. Fan. I do not hate. Yeah, here's the thing: if you're a Kentucky fan right now, you guys are playing better in basketball, so you can care less about this. <clears throat> Devin Leary, baby, let's go. Georgia would play Auburn, Florida, and Kentucky. I think that's perfect. I think Georgia should have to play Alabama every year. <laughs> I think Georgia they should will, have to play Alabama Atlanta. three times. Yeah, <laughs> they Georgia should have to, play should have to play three times. Yeah, I agree. That and way, at least Georgia should have to play Alabama and Michigan. At least one year. of them will lose twice. <laughs> <laughs> At least Florida would have Georgia, South Carolina, and Oklahoma. That's tough. The Florida, Look, Oklahoma Florida got a game. tough draw. Florida got a tough draw as well. Mm -hmm. South Carolina, Florida, Tennessee, and Kentucky, and that's it. All right. So when we're looking at hardest, hardest schedule or hardest permanent rivals, to me, man, like, I mean, there's a couple to look at. I would say the easiest. I would go Mississippi State. Um, I, I think has the easiest when it comes to hardest. I mean, Auburn does have Bama and Georgia. Even it's either Auburn or Bama. It's either Auburn or Bama. I mean, you got Auburn has yeah. um, Georgia and Alabama. <laughs> Great. Alabama, I love this format. Alabama though. has Auburn, Tennessee. I, I will say, I don't think they could have done a better job. Though, if this is what it ends up being, like in my mind, I tried to go through yeah. and, like, mm -hmm. you know, Professor Megorium's Emporium. This thing. There's always going to be called. somebody who's unhappy. Yeah, it's, and there's going to be one of those peripheral rivals. You know what I found fascinating looking at this list. When you look at, at LSU and Arkansas, they didn't have LSU and Arkansas playing each other, which is kind of a peripheral mm -hmm. rivalry. But I knew yeah. some of the peripheral rivalries are going to go to the wayside. Now, those are just permanent rivals. They could play them in the other schedule. I don't know yet. We haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. But like some of those peripheral rivalries are going to go away for a little bit, but you're going to create new ones. Like, wait a minute. Like, Georgia's going to play Ole Miss and A&M, and we're going to get to see matches we haven't seen in so long. So I'm excited the about The text. So Go ahead. So here's what Nick Saban said. He said, uh, you know, after they got the draw of Auburn, Tennessee, and LSU, so I would like to have more balance. They're giving us Auburn, LSU, and Tennessee. I don't know how they've come to that. <laughs> and then insert insert Brian Kelly here yesterday uh, at LSU said, I want to play the best. I came down here to the SEC because I want to play against Alabama. I want to play a and I want to play Auburn, the great teams. And in our new scheduling, we get to play Alabama every year, Ole Miss every year, and a and That's really why I came down here. I want to play those games. I think playing nine SEC games is great for your schedule and it prepares you for the opportunity to play for a championship, but also play for the national championship. But then he also added, I think everybody has to take on their schedules. Nick has never backed down from a challenge. I'm not too worried about whether Nick Saban is going to have his knows, team ready yeah. when he plays LSU. Here's, look, he, Nick is always, I think Saban operates from a point of, I always want to get us more. So, like, regardless of what it is, like, it can be the greatest idea of all, but here's how I can make it better to help me out, to be more advantageous. Help me. Help me help you help me. That's what I think from Nick Saban. But I don't think this is about Nick Saban's coaching tenure at Alabama. I think Nick Saban sees himself, and he is, as the overlord and protector of Alabama football. I think this is a future thing. I think this is a who he's going to leave the program to, having to play Auburn and LSU and Tennessee. I don't think this is as much about Nick Saban coaching as Nick Saban handing it off to somebody else and leaving them in the best position possible to be able to have a chance to even remotely recreate the success that Nick Saban had. I don't think Nick Saban's scared of playing these teams at all. You basically had to play them each every year anyway, if you look about it. I mean, Tennessee and Alabama is a rivalry. They play every third uh, Saturday in October. Auburn and Alabama, duh, we know that. Alabama and LSU, you've been in the same division. You have to play each other forever. So this isn't anything new. But I think Nick is trying to position himself and position Alabama in the best spot possible, which is smart 
for him to hand this off to somebody else and not have to say, all right, here you go. Yeah, you got great players, but you're definitely going to have to play these three permanent teams. I think that's how ingrained Nick Saban in Alabama football is. He sees himself as the father of Alabama football. Well, look, nobody wants to see Alabama play Troy. Nobody wants to see Alabama play UAB, right? You want to see them play Auburn, Tennessee, and LSU every single year. There's a reason those three schools get named whenever they sing Dixieland Delight in the stadium, right? So if you want to be regarded as the greatest college football coach of all time, which many people think Nick Saban is, and you want to have a clause in your contract that says you're the highest paid coach the second another coach gets paid higher, then you have to go play the best teams every year. So I like it. Yeah, what a great clause in your contract. Yeah, so you got to play the best yeah. teams. You know, you have the best and I'd rather you own it, kind of like what Brian Kelly's saying, to be yeah. honest. Well, I feel like it's just like Nick's been in the SEC since 07, before that at LSU. Like, I feel like Brian Kelly, like, this is cool. Brian, it's cool. But you're still new here. Like, it's cool just to go to Miami, you know, for, for a year. But if you live in Miami for five years, it's a little bit different. So let's take some shots. You'll take the beating a little bit. But let's not jump the gun. I'm going to play the best. Look, yeah. you're, in the, you're in the SEC West. You're playing the best teams. Well, that's the point. That's what he's saying, right? So, like, if the statement is always, well, all the, all the best teams in the country are in the SEC and there's no difference between the top teams and the middle teams and the bottom teams, then what does it matter which permanent rivals you get? Yeah. Right? I, I, like, why is Nick Saban saying, I don't know how they came to this, why, why front-loading us with these three teams if they're all the best teams? Yeah, I, I, I think Brian Kelly saw an opportunity to kind of look like a badass a little bit. Yeah, he took it, for sure. Which I totally blame. I don't know. And, and to me, David, I, I don't think the argument we're talking about the SEC, I don't, want, I, don't, I don't want this to come off of as me saying that the SEC is the best because all the teams are fantastic teams. and We know they're not. The top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. I think like, the problem with, with, that I have with what Saban said was like, what do you accomplish by this? Like, I get your positioning and posturing, but what do you accomplish by it? If you wanted to get this changed, and you have the ability to get it changed, which if anybody in college football could get this change, it's Nick Saban. Why would you not just make a backdoor call to somebody? Behind closed doors. Behind closed doors. Exactly. Why would you, what, what do you gain? That's why I like what Brian Kelly's saying so much, because like you're saying, he saw an opportunity to be a tough guy. I think he also saw that any words he says are gonna be futile in getting anything changed. So why not just, it's like, it's like the guys in 300 going into battle. Like if you're already if you are if you're already gonna have the fight of your life ahead of you, you might as well just go in like a badass for with sure. Utter confidence. Yeah, and you're one and zero against Bama. Let's not act. Like Brian Kelly came in and won the West year one, and the only person who stuck a year out at Miami was Nick Saban. Two years, yeah. But. Yeah, I love it. Hey YouTube, appreciate you checking us out, coming in and hanging with the boys, the fellas, the crew, the men, the squad, but the good kind. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that like button. Turn on that notification bell, ring it Quasimodo style, so you know every time we're dropping content, because we know that you know that we know you love it.